you know, switch topics with me for a second. Um, you know, at one point, it just felt like you was the feature king. You was on so many songs, back to back to back. Um, you know, you, you was on the Welcome to Atlanta remix. Um, Puff had the, you on the, the Shake Your Tail Feather joint. Um, I, could, I could keep naming them and, and, and rattling them off one after the other. Was, was that a, a, a strategic plan on your part? setting up your solo album or was it just yo people was calling because you was just that hot at the time no nah, somewhere somewhere around the tick album or after batter up on country gram i just started doing a lot of features um and i wasn't saying no to none of it like i was taking all the tools and fuse i was i was getting on you know most of the my peers albums and stuff like that so i just never said no um I like rapping, man. I think some people don't like it. I think some people do it as a gig, you know what I'm saying? I really, really like the studio part of it, the creation part of it. So I just never said no, man. And plus some of them beats, I was probably would end up jacking them in the future anyway, just to freestyle on it anyway, you know what I'm saying? So it was perfect timing. It's a lot of remixes. Uh, so it was, it was dope. It was dope. I think that was like the end of the remix era. Correct, yeah. Yeah, because it, it, it felt like it felt like every time you turned on the radio, Murph was on another record. But I understand you didn't say no, and I get it, and I respect it, and you was out there, and you love what you're doing, you're getting your money. But it's almost like outside of Nelly, you really got singled out of the group. Like, like it, 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 it was, if we need somebody um, who spit, if we need somebody you know, with that new that 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 Midwest swag about them, we got to get Murph on 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 this remix. So it it definitely I get that you wasn't saying no, but you was getting the calls, and, I, and it definitely felt like you was singled out. Yeah, that was it was some calls coming. Uh, I'm pretty good, Press. I ain't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta agree with you on that one, kid. I, I I can I can rap. I can't say that if I do so my say so myself, I can pretty much uh yeah I can rap. So I think that was part of the phone calls, and I was just appreciative of it. You know what I'm saying? That they actually heard a little dude from St. Louis. Nah, I mean, okay, every every artist dreams, and maybe you this wasn't your dream because the last time I talked to you, you was like your prayers. You know what? I always saw myself as part of the group. But the average rapper dreams of having their solo project, putting out their album. You finally got an opportunity coming off of massive success to put out your album, album goes gold. You know, was was that a dream come true for you? And 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 why did it take so long for the second one to come out? Because that album did well and it had joints on it. Uh, I don't know about dream come true. I can't say that one. I can definitely say um, I had fun recording that album, and I definitely. Uh, was on purpose, you know, creating that mug. Like, I, if I'd have known, I would have took off. Like, if I'd have known that classic albums used to be like 10 to 12 records, you know what I'm saying? I ain't think about it like that because I got like 17, 18 joints on that thing. Mm -hmm. I think I should have, uh, I would have cut four or five records off to make it complete, like make it that exact so people really can hear me. Uh, but I was so excited about being able to put you know, my people on records and had about three or four tick records on that thing. I had a lot of features from St. Louis, you know what I'm saying? My wife, Seven Lee, was on that thing. Um, uh, King Jacob and Prince Church, you know what I'm saying? That was like a, a little side group I had that was my cats from high school. We was called the Young Dudes. I got them on a couple tracks. It was just dope. And then the producers, I was messing with new producers uh, like Wally and uh, Coco who made Tail Feather. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was it felt like I was putting something on. Cause like on the end of Ali album, um, Ali came out with a solo album called Heavy Starch. And the end of his album, he had like 20 St. Louis artists on, on one song. It was like, Damn. it was 
it's the dopest thing ever. And he was just, you know, he art. That's why I don't hear people when they talk about him putting on like that's what he do. Like that, that was the perfect example of him doing that. And uh, so when I was doing my album, that's all I was thinking about was like who coming up with me, who riding my, you know what I'm saying? So I was putting them people in play. That's all I really was really was on putting them in play and trying to see when we doing the next tick album, like trying to make sure it leads to everything. Like I, I wish I would have got to a tick single because I. I got a couple on there that's tick records that it would have that would have been dope to do. And it would have led to a tick album. So when we was doing our solo albums, we was always thinking maybe my third single will lead to what's next. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was a solo artist or I feature him on there or whether it was um the group album that we wanted to come with. So we didn't get that far on there because they kind of shut that album down. We dropped, they dropped them. Like I said, remember I told you about them dropping Nelly albums right after our, every time we dropped the album, they had dropped a Nelly project two months later and they was just doing it purposely, trying to create, keep that buzz, thinking it's, and they overshadow some stuff sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Because they'd be like, Murphy Law posters would be popping that summer, but once, these, once two months after your album, month after your album come out, they move on to the next project and now we it's whole different posters like no nah, these events i for about a year now i need to be working on this you know what i'm saying but they ain't they ain't on it they, that's labels wasn't on that back then it was a big number one if you didn't do a certain thing in your first week i don't i'm not gonna put my money in that second third fourth week like that you know what i'm saying so you got to make sure you do number back then when the label was going you make sure you do great numbers on the come out that way they can flush money into your the next thing going you know so i understood it was super dope and that's what led to my second album that didn't come out because it was it was they waiting on a certain buzz type of thing i don't know what the hell they were waiting on for real but they was just waiting a whole lot of waiting restaurant waiting on because the album been done and it had some great great songs great songs like second album might be that was my class that was gonna be my class it was it was like that Oh, uh, dang. so hold on. For, so, so you for, actually for, had your. I'm, I'm sorry. You actually had your second album in the can. They had it. No, they had it. Yeah, it was. It was. They had it so long that I end up making more songs and adding them every year. I was adding another. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, y'all ain't putting it out still. Like, I can't stop creating. You know what I'm saying? So, I was swapping out shit and all type of stuff. But I had some big records because we knew how to make big records. Now, you know what I'm saying, Murph. Murph had a bluesy, um, laid back first album, but my second album had some dope concept, big records, big hooks. It was real big, Ooh. tail feather scale. You know what I'm saying? And I, yeah, they 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 missed that ball. They had a lot of art. They they end up signing a lot of artists at that time too. They end up um getting all the hot stuff was coming through their thing because they collabed with Motown. They collabed with Def Jam. So all of that was really under Universal Umbrella at the time. So they just had a lot going on. And at the time, it was like, it was just a lot. I got lost in the sauce, man. You got to speak up, speak for yourself. You got to represent yourself very well to uh, make sure you stay in business-wise. Fan-wise, I still was, I had mixtapes out. I had all type of stuff was going on. I was still on the radio. So fan-wise, I was great. Each doing shows the whole nine, but Business wise and label wise, I was lost in the soul. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.